Hi everyone, welcome back to the day 2 of uh, coding challenge that is AL Programming Bootcamp. You are learning with me Dr. Gomadev. We are in day 2. If you have missed the day 1, please go and watch that. Okay, that is introduction to AL Programming and extensions. What are the basic things which you have to download and how to set up your environment. So today we will be understanding what are variables, data types and also we will understand identifiers. Though if you know this already, please watch this. So I'll be discussing about the scope of the variables, when to assign what, how to declare everything in detail. So this is the day two agenda. We'll be understanding variables and we will learn with example definition. And also we'll be learning about the data types. What is a data type? We will understand identifiers with example. And also the important thing is we will learn global and local variable. And finally, <clears throat> we will have a summary key points. And also I'll give you some exercises to do with. So the main objective of this particular bootcamp is mastering IIL program in three weeks. Of course, you have to, you can master only if you keep on practicing at least for the next six months. But this will give you a very basic foundation and also it will make you to the next level so you you have to dedicate 10 to 20 minutes each day to in for this learning journey so i'll be releasing this video every day exactly at 6 pm so you can uh, spend 10 to 20 minutes and uh, members of this community who can access this video early which means that you don't want to wait till 6 pm so you will be accessing this at least 24 or 48 hours before this uh, uh, public release and exclusive resources such as documents mind maps this ppt pdf whatever i'm discussing will be accessible to the community members as well i'll be sharing it to the community members so subscribers are invited to view the content video content and engage in the hands-on practices subscribers will receive common based support throughout the challenge and finish the challenge and earn a set of five outstanding ebooks on business central so this uh, completing the challenge and how you have to, what are the basic rules for this and everything I'll be discussing after uh, uh, after five or six videos. So please wait for that. And special mentions will be given in the channel for the subscribers and the members who have successfully completed the video, this particular bootcamp. So before that, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please go and subscribe now. It's Gooms Tech Talks channel. And if you want to join as a community member, if you want to access exclusive uh, perks like documents, PDFs, books and etc. You have to join here. OK, and uh, go to the playlist. And important thing is, even though if you are not planning to join, but here I have a lot of playlists which are specifically for the subscribers. That is BC Tutorial Technical Consultant. Even if you are a functional consultant, that is another tutorial. There is another playlist which you can access. So pre-requested for day two is what you have to go and complete the day one exercise because that is very important because you have to download and set up the environment for business central. So let us start the today's understanding like variables are important concept in any programming language. Even if you're going to learn, if you're planning to learn Python, if you're planning to learn any other language, variables are very, very important. Okay, so these are fundamental concepts of data types. Now, let us understand variable as a box. Okay, so imagine variable as a box where you can store something for use later. So this is a variable. Okay, just like a box can hold different item, variable can hold different types of information. You might have a box for toys. So here you can have a box for toys. This is a different information. Okay, you can have a box, uh, to uh, box for books. Okay, you can have a bo uh, box for clouds. So in programming, you might have a variable for numbers. If you think this in terms of a variable, you can have a variable to store your age, you can or employee age, employees age. You can um, uh, you can have a variable to store employee salary. You can have a variable to store employee name. Okay, so this is what. So that is what a variable is all about. So a variable can hold a different types of information. It will hold the information for future use. So a variable may be for numbers, variable may be for text. So this enables, so this variable will definitely enable you to manipulate the data within the business central. So that is what the information about the variable which you know, which you should know okay so uh, uh, we'll be understanding for example uh, imagine you have a piggy bank which we will call savings 
okay every week you put your allowance into the piggy bank the piggy bank is like a variable okay so you will be storing something so uh, uh, imagine that savings so you will be storing some value into the savings this is what the variable okay so this is uh, this is how we will be uh, uh, we can relate variable with that so how uh, let us first understand these concepts and we will go and think about the uh, uh, we will go and try it practically okay if you think about the identifier it is the nickname for that variable okay so you have a box okay but what what is the name you will be giving to that box you you need for example if you have a collection of 100 box you cannot uh, you cannot pick it up like box 1 box 2 box 3 like you have to give a specific name for that so an identifier is a nickname for something that you can easily call it without describing it every time for example imagine you have a pet dog and you name it buddy okay every time you want to call your dog you don't have to say uh, the brown dog please come or a fluffy tail dog please ta come you can just simply call buddy please come okay so that is how the identifier is also so identifier is naming a, a variable naming a variable or giving naming something to describe it so as we discuss a uh, variable is like a container and you have to name the container to call it right that is what the identifier so a uh, name of a programming element whatever you name we call it as an identifier give your variable a name okay you have to give a variable variable is to store the data but where you are storing you have to give the name right so that is what an identifier and call it whenever you want you can just call it whenever you want it okay and uh, these three concepts are interrelated okay variable uh, uh identifier and data type so we should understand all these things so that we can easily uh, use it so now you have a variable and you have a name for that variable now what you are going to do what you are going to store in that variable okay what you are going to store in that uh, variable with that identifier mm -hmm. okay so the thing is what see if you take a uh, if you take a water bottle okay w whether you can store books inside the water bottle no you can only store water inside the water bottle which is a liquid substance right likewise uh, if if you want to store something in this box okay can you fill in water here or an oil here no we will be storing only a books or a cloth inside it or something like a toys which are solid format likewise every variable you have to tell what type of data you are going to store it okay these examples are for human but imagine you are going to deal with a machine you are going to deal with a, a machine that is you are going to create a erp so you have to tell what you are going to store it in that variable that is what data type what type of data you are going to store there so i am going to store a text data for example if you want to uh, store your name that is employee name or a student name or a item name so it is, it should be in a text format if you are going to store the age of the student then it should be in the number format okay type of data what type of data you are going to do and if you are going to store the salary then it should be a decimal format okay decimal type of data if you are going to store the uh, image of the student or if you are going to store the image of the employee then it should be a blob data that is blob binary large object data okay so you have to tell what you are going to do right so that is what we are going to do it here see in this is what the visual studio code once if we have installed you might have you may you can see this okay so here we'll be discussing about the objects and everything in the uh, fourth day okay where you should first understand variable right so here you can see this is a variable where this is a variable which is used to store the data you have to tell that i am going to declare a variable okay so here where is to tell that i am going to declare a variable and here this is an identifier so this is what the name of the variable okay what name you are planning to give it for the variable variable is used to store the data that is fine but where it is going to store okay um, what is the name how we are going to call it later that you have to tell so here i am going to uh, if you are going to store the name of the employee then you have to 
type name okay so the, this is the this is what this is the identifier this is a variable which is going to store your employee name so what is my name of the what is the type of data which i'm going to store uh, store it here i'm going to store the text data okay i'm going to store the text data here mm. fine so you can tell what type of data and for example if i'm going to store um, the age of the employee so you can just simply go here age and you can tell it is an integer data of course you will be storing the integer value in the age okay if you are going to store the image uh, uh, employee image amp image okay then of course it will be in the blob storage now it has been changed changed to the okay blob storage has various uh, thing okay so we will discuss that later so these are the types of data which you will be which you will be creating it okay so these are the types of data which we can create it and that will be used whenever you are going to access whenever you want to store something into the data so we will be using this okay so these are the various types of data uh, these are the variable these are the data type and this is the identifier which we usually use it i hope you all are clear with this okay what kind of data will be using a variable should be declared with the data type okay so if you uh, if you are uh, a python developer or if you know python already there you won't be declaring a variable you will directly go and uh, uh, initialize the variable directly that we call it as a uh, that is a dynamic uh, dynamic usage of a variable okay you no need to declare specifically and based on the type data which you are entering it will automatically understand python but here since we are developing a yapi system you have to specifically give what type of data you are going to enter okay so to know more about the data type you can go and watch my playlist i have already told you where is my playlist go to gomes tech docs channel there you have a playlist option there you have bc tech tutorial in that the 94th video is on the data types in business central al programming so here you can see the complete type of data that is a data type so data type basically have fundamental data type and complex data type so fundamental data types are um, <clears throat> you can uh, you can think about the fundamental data types like uh, like integer big integer decimal character byte duration string code text everything okay and so these are all the fundamental data types and complex data types to talk about is what blob code code unit date formula dialog file guid key reference so all these things we are which i have discussed in this video and this is the mind map which i have created uh, which i have created where uh, the members can ask for this please send me a mail members know my mail id please send me a mail i'll be sharing this uh, sharing this mind map to you you can just uh, check this so it, it is a complete set of mind map so if you just click here it will open another set of uh, 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 routes okay so example what is that and fundamental data type what is fundamental data type everything with an example i have given so please don't forget to ask this okay and <clears throat> yes so here you can see there are various types of data so as a beginner okay so here we are just concentrating on very basic data type right so we will be uh, we will be understanding about the fundamental data types so whenever we start creating any code right i'll be telling you like what are the fundamental data type so i'll be mentioning that this is a fundamental data type and we are creating this here okay so don't worry so whenever we create it i'll be, i'll just show you show you that so as of now you just understand try to create these variables okay don't worry about this uh, page and all so before creating a variable you have to open something okay you have to open a object we'll be discussing about the object later but in order to create one single object just type t p a g e okay it will open up here don't worry about all these errors we'll be uh, rectifying all these errors just scroll down which will take you to a variable part there you can start typing the variable and check whether it is really working out okay we will discuss about all these things later <clears throat> 
so these are the types of variables so in variable you have two types sco two scopes in a variable okay so one is the global variable and second one is the local variable so this global as you know that this is the meaning of global g l o b a l global means wide range of access which is available throughout the object object in the sense we'll be discussing about the objects like table page everything just understand which is available throughout the object okay in every trigger and in every function whereas in the local scope <coughs> which variable can be created which if you have created a variable inside a trigger or inside a procedure which we call it as a scope of the variable as a local scope okay and it is available only under that particular local uh, vari local thing okay and it cannot be available across any other uh, or across the object it is available only in that particular procedure or a trigger okay so i'll also tell you how when to use the local variable first let us go and understand here so here we have declared this where uh, my int and all like this is a global variable okay this is a global variable which you have declared as a global you don't want to tell something like global a uh, 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 keyword global is not required so since you have declared it outside uh, that is outside all your triggers and procedures so that is why we call it as a global variable and uh, this is an action okay this is a trigger inside the action if you are creating any variable inside the trigger you can create a variable inside the trigger colon text okay i'm just creating a variable inside the trigger which is only accessible inside this trigger you cannot access this int one okay int one outside this for example see here i have declared my int right so you can access my int here this is a field name okay my int which is accessible so once if you keep your mouse here you can see it's a field but you cannot create a field as int one because this is the int one which we have created right so that is not accessible here because that is a local variable which has the local scope once if you try to create it will tell you that it does not exist in the current uh, current context because this is the uh, what is this uh, this int one is what the local scope okay this is having the local scope okay this is a local variable whereas the um a name uh, uh, that is one we have created here is what my int is the global variable okay this is the scope of a local and a global variable where you can access throughout the object okay so since i have two types of scope when should i create a global variable and when should i declare a local variable so if you if you feel like the data needs to be accessed from multiple functions or the paths for example once i have created a variable i should be use i should use that throughout that object then you have to create it as a global variable and if you have a constants or configuration settings that many parts of the program use then you have to go with a global variable okay so the example scenario is like imagine you are writing a program for a bookstore okay you have a discount rate that applies to all the books in the store the discount rate is used in several functions calculating the price at checkout displaying the discounted price on the books label and calculating earnings at the end of the day so this discount rate should be a global variable okay but you should be very cautious while creating a global variable global variable can lead to code that is hard to debug and maintain because any part of the program can change the variable which can have unintended consequences elsewhere in the program so the data is only relevant within a specific function or limited con context in the sense you should not declare that as a global variable okay and you want to prevent unintended side effects caused by changes to the variable from different parts of the program then you have you should not declare that as a global variable just go as a local variable and when you should create a local variable the variable is only needed within a single function or a specific block so as as i told as i showed this example if you feel like i am going to create a variable which is only required for this particular trigger and this uh, variable is nowhere useful for me to in any other uh, procedure or any other program throughout this then don't declare this variable as a global variable better go ahead with the local variable okay and you want to ensure that only a current block of code can access or modify the value at the variable then you have to go ahead with what a local variable 
okay so when you should not use a local variable the variable is a shared access data across the function if you want your data to be shared across the function or a um, uh, object then you have to declare the variable as a global variable and if you feel like there is a preserving state for that okay so the preserving state in the sense local variables are reinitialized every time a function is called so whenever you are calling that function the local variable will be reinitialized which means they don't preserve any data between the calls okay if you need to maintain a state across multiple calls to your function a local variable will not work and there are various uh, uh, things to consider between local and global variable where i'll be where i will release a video on difference between local and global variable soon in uh, in upcoming video so you can just go and watch that okay so yes we are now in the conclusion we understood the basics of variables we understood the basics of identifiers and data types so variables are to hold the data okay to hold data or to store data uh, identifiers are to name the variable name anything okay naming the variable or naming the procedure or naming the uh, trigger that we call it as an identifier naming something okay data types it is, uh, is to is to tell is to tell what type of data you are going to store it okay and uh, we also discussed about the variable scope like global and local scope so yes uh, today's exercise is what create a variable to hold the customer's name you have to just create you have to think see in order to store the customer name you should not uh, keep it as integer okay because every data type has its own speciality if you are making it as an integer it will hold only what integer data type between 0 to 9 that is 100 1000 or something like this okay so if you are naming a, if you are hold if you are planning to hold a customer name then what type of data you have to keep it and if you are uh, planning to create a customer's age what type of data it should be if you are planning to create a customer's address what type it should be and if you are going to hold the customer salary what type of data it should be so you should keep this in mind while creating these things and uh, i'll i'll update the blog and i'll also share the link with you so that you can check where you have to find various types of data type and how to uh, uh, name everything and of course i have showed showed my uh, video which i have already published right so here you can find the complete information about the data types and how you have to store everything okay and yes we are in the end of day 2 we have completed so tomorrow we'll be discussing about the statements and comments in al programming what are the statements what is a comment what is a syntax yes i have forgotten here so i haven't added here so we'll be discussing about the syntax what are the basic syntax in al programming and how to follow all these things okay so this we will discuss tomorrow and then on day 4 we'll be discussing about the snippets used to create objects in business central this is very important and after this whatever we are learning are very 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 important. and so please watch it and this is the day 3 so if you have any queries please leave that in the comment box and um, uh, if you want to access the documents please join as a member you have to be in a as a member so if you are joining as a new you have to be uh, you have to stay at least for 30 days to access all these documents okay um take care have a great day bye bye i'll meet you soon in the next video